eyes of understanding to understand the depths of your word in Jesus' name. We're asking, O oh Lord, that as you give us understanding, you also give us the desire and the heart, the conviction to live by your word every moment of our lives in Jesus' name. And we're asking, O oh Lord, that as we live day by day, close to you, according to your word, will be ready and prepared for what is coming before us in Jesus' name. We know the church is waiting for the rapture. And we pray, Lord, when your saints marching will be among the number that will be with you at the time of that rapture in Jesus' name, that our eyes will not see, that we will not experience, that we will not go through the great tribulation coming upon the people of the world, even after the church has gone in Jesus' name. Be with us today. Help us to understand. Help us to follow. Help us to fully follow you and to decide that our lives, every moment, will be lived to the glory of your name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're looking at Revelation chapter 17, and I'm reading to you from verse 1 all through to verse 6. Revelation chapter 17 from verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show thee the judgment of the great awe that seated upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk of the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and i saw a woman seat upon a scarlet colored, colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and, and ten horns and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet co in scarlet color and dead with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her forehead was in him reaching mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and i saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of jesus and when I saw her, I wondered there with great admiration, great astonishment, or great surprise. Those are the verses we're looking at today. And in these verses, we have described to us the mother of abominations. You see that right there in verse, in verse 5. And upon her forehead was an enriching mystery. Babylon the great the mother of harlots and the mother of the abominations of the earth and so in the study today we're looking at the full description of the mother of abominations the chapter says very much about this mother of harlots this mother of abominations of the earth she is variously described in the passage we have read together already number one as a great awe Number two, as a harlot with whom the kings of this world, the kings of the earth, have committed, have, have committed fornication. Number three is described as a woman arrayed in purple and scarlet color, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Number four, as it goes on in, this, in the description of their spiritual harlot, spiritual, spiritually spiritual alert and system it says number four that it's the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of the lord jesus christ the question then is who does this or the adulteress the harlot represent a harlot you understand is a prostitute a harlot or a prostitute is an unfaithful sensual woman selling herself selling her body for money and this individual is referred to or this particular system is referred to by these various names and as you come to verse 5 you understand it's not just talking about an individual it's talking about a system an organization a body 
and a world wide body for that matter a body that is having influence not to just in a, in a single location but all over the earth look at verse 5 again and upon her forehead was a name reaching mystery when something is mysterious it's something hidden it's something we don't understand normally until it is disclosed exposed and revealed and interpreted for understanding and it's referred to as mystery and it is called babylon the great but you understand it goes beyond the old babylon because the old babylon is not a mystery the old babylon was revealed the old babylon everybody knew you knew the location you knew the king and you knew the activities and you knew the time of the empire but this one is mystery and it is mystery babylon the great and now it is referred to as the murder of halos the mother that is the one that has given birth to halotry, spiritual halotry, mysterious halotry. And also is the mother of the abominations of the earth. Not just of a location, but of the whole earth. How do you understand this kind of picture? When you think about the church, you understand this mystery Babylon. Because the church, that is the true church, is pictured as the bride of Christ. So then, the highlight will be the unfaithful, untrue, false, apostate church. Let's look at the church to start with in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, looking at verse 2, you will see how the apostle by the Spirit of God speaks about the church. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband. That I may present you to a chaste virgin to Christ As a chaste virgin to Christ And so when you're thinking about the church You're thinking of, about a virgin A pure, spotless, sinless, holy, righteous bride We're told in Ephesians chapter 5 Still talking about the church That is the true church Talking about the true church We have Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 Husbands love your wives, even as Christ also love the church. That means then the church is the bride of the, of Christ, and gave Himself for it that He might sanctify and cleanse it, or the washing of water by the word, that He might present it, present that church, that virgin, that spotless body, and that spotless, washed white, than whiter than snow. That is washed whiter than through the blood of the Lamb. That church, a glorious church, he presents to himself, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. He tells us in verse 32, This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. And as we come to Revelation chapter 19, still talking about the church, Revelation chapter 19 reading from verse 6 And I heard a seat word The voice of a great multitude As the voice of many waters And as the voice of the mighty thundering saying Hallelujah for the Lord God Omnipotent train it Let us be glad and rejoice And give honor to him For the marriage of the Lamb is come And his wife has made herself ready And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true saints of God. You've seen there the picture of the church. is a bride. And is a virgin. And is holy and righteous. It's sinless and spotless. But... When you think of the war, then of, you think of the harlot. Come back to chapter 17 of Revelation. In Revelation chapter uh, 17, it talks about another kind of person. This one is pictured as a woman. And this one is pictured as a mother. And she is also pictured as an harlot. A woman, a harlot, as well as a mother. As we go back to verse 1, it says, There came one of the seven angels which had the seven verse and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show thee the judgment of the great all. 
And that uh, when you talk about boredom or you're talking about the war, you're talking about an adulteress that seated upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth has committed fornication and inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of a fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman. Here you see that she's referred to as a woman. I saw this woman seated, uh, sitting upon a scarlet colored beast full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. And dead were gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name reaching mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken of the blood of the saints and of the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And this a woman, or this war, or this adulteress, or this harlot, and we're told concerning her that uh, she's sitting upon many waters. And it says that it says these uh, many waters. The interpretation is there. You find in verse fifteen, many waters. Verse fifteen, and it says unto me, the waters which thou sowest, where the war, the hallowed, the woman, and these apostate church seated, a peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The apostate church then, that's already worldwide even now will have worldwide control and worldwide influence during the great tribulation because it is this apostate church it is this uh, the opposite of the contrary part to the true church this one will have a great power great influence at the time of the great tribulation the religious system of the last days will be an unmistakable manifestation of satan's counterfeit of the true of true christianity and the symbolism of spiritual halotry or adultery is always, uh, you know, of the people who outwardly carry the name of God while actually they are worshipping and serving all the gods. As we refer to the children of Israel, you remember that the children of Israel were referred to as being married to the Lord God Almighty. But when they polluted themselves, corrupted themselves, and when they became unfaithful to the Lord, they were referred to as harlots. In Isaiah chapter 1, Isaiah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 21. Isaiah chapter, tw chapter 1, verse 21. How is a faithful city become an harlot? It's referring to the people of Israel that they were faithful to the Lord, but now they are falling. They were pure before the Lord, but now they are perverted. They were holiness unto the Lord, but now they have gone into harlotry spiritually. How is a faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodging it, but now murderers. You'll see then what Israel became, and you will see what a greater part of the church will become. We're told in Jeremiah chapter 3, Jeremiah chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 2, reading from verse 3. Again, it's talking about the past state or the past condition, the past standing of the children of Israel. How are they? They were holy unto the Lord. They were righteous before the Lord. They were the people of God. But when they went back before the Lord, when they went back from the Lord, they became backsliders. They were falling. And then they were referred to now as hallows. In Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 3, Israel was holiness unto the Lord, the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him shall offend, evil shall come upon them, says the Lord. It's referring to the past experience of the past status of the past stage of the children of Israel. They were holiness unto the Lord, but what came upon them, they backslid. In Jeremiah chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 6. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, as I've seen that which backsliding Israel has done, she has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there has and the, and there has played the harlot. You know, in chapter two of Jeremiah it says it was holiness unto the Lord. 
But now in verse 6 of chapter 3 of Jeremiah, it says they are backsliding. And now that backsliding is, is identified or equated with halotry. They, they, are, they are played the halot. And I said after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me. But she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw when all the causes thereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorcement. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot. You understand that Israel was divided into actually two kinds of two kingdoms. You have ten tribes on one side, two tribes on the other side. The ten tribes went into evil, into idolatry. And God said, I have rejected them. They are the kingdom of Israel. They have gone into spiritual adultery or idolatry. And yet Judah, the kingdom of Judah, seeing that and seeing that the Lord had rejected Israel, they still went in the same way. And Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. In verse 9, and it came to pass through the lightness of our Adam that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and uh, with stalks. Committed adultery with stones and stalks, that means she went into idol worship. And that idol worship is referred to as spiritual idolatry or spiritual adultery. And so you understand what we're talking about. As we come back to Revelation chapter 17, verse 1, all through to verse 6. Let me just help you to understand this. That it's talking about the apostate church. And that in the last days, at the time of the great tribulation, there will be the manifestation of this apostate church. And you will see, it will be referred to as a mystery. And the Bible says, the mystery of iniquity already works. Only he who now let us will let until he will be taken out of the way. Which means, the true church is still hindering the full manifestation of the characteristics of the adulterous church, or the apostate church, or mystery Babylon, or the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. And all the people that join the apostate church, that join the backsliding church, that join the church that are not firmly standing on Christ, the cornerstone, and the head, they'll be part of this harlot, Babylon, mystery, mother of abominations, and mother of harlots. And when you join, to join them is very, very, is something that is going to bring real trouble upon the people in those days. Number one, you understand, when you join the apostate church, it's only the true church that will go away in the rapture. When the rapture takes place, you will not be able to go. There's some people that say, it doesn't matter which church I attend. It doesn't matter which assembly I go to. It doesn't matter the people I fellowship with. All that matters is just my relationship with the Lord. You're wrong. It's not like that. Because you see, that apostate church will be looked at together as an entity, as a group, as a woman, harlot, as the mother of abominations. Let me give you these uh, words to hang your thoughts on. Number one, it is very dangerous to join the apostate church. You can see from what we are reading and studying. Number two, it is very deceptive. Because you see, the deception, it will look as if we're still serving God. We're still calling on the same God. Israel did not know that they had gone away from the Lord until Isaac came to them. Until Jeremiah came to them. Until Ezekiel pointed it out. It is very deceptive. Number one, dangerous. Number two, deceptive. Number three, it is defiling. Because, uh, you know, you join that fellowship, you join that organization, you join that church, maybe a new church, maybe an old church. But the whole system is a system of uh, you know, people are falling away from the Lord. Maybe a backslider established a new church, or maybe a church that has been there for a long time, and they're not standing totally on the totality of the word of God. Number three, it is defiling. Because it's referred to as an adult. Number, number four, it is deadening. It deadens your conscience. It deadens your heart. It deadens your mind. And you'll be doing things as if your conscience is seared with a hot iron. Number five, it is demonizing. 
because they are seduced by evil spirits and these evil spirits demonize them and deaden them and they do not know their left from their right they do not know right doctrine from wrong doctrine false doctrine from sound doctrine anymore and number six it is destructive number seven it is damning it damns the soul and uh, you will see what we're studying as we go into the judgment of this harlot, of this mystery Babylon the Great, of this mother of harlots, abominations of the earth. You will see damnation will come eventually at the end of the day. We're told in um, in Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Second Corinthians chapter eleven. I'm reading from verse thirteen. Second Corinthians eleven verse thirteen. It says, "For such are false apostles." deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of christ and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves uh, are tra be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works you will see then the danger of uh, joining the apostate church you will see then there uh, the danger of joining a church uh, where you have you know either a backslider leading or you know a person that appears to be reading the word of god transforming himself to be an apostle of christ but it's not of god very very dangerous deceptive defiling deadening demonizing destructive and damning you look at second thessalonians in second thessalonians i'm reading from chapter 2 verse 7. second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7 for the mystery of iniquity does already work only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way and then shall the wicked be revealed whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming even him whose coming is after the walking of satan with all power and signs and lying wonders in the last days there will be the multiplication of those wonders signs and wonders but they are deceptive they are dangerous and they are damning and they are defiling and they are deafening they are demonizing it will suck you in if you join them into the demonic system and eventually will damn your soul it tells us in verse 10 with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause god shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie and the new prophet or the new preacher or the new founder of the church will deceive you and if you don't have the love of the truth yourself if in your own heart you've been wondering am i going to you know continue living a righteous life a holy life and it's going to be restricted am i not going to have some real freedom and grow wings and do as i like if you have been like that you'll be sent a spirit of delusion and you'll believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness in uh, first uh, timothy chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 1 first timothy chapter 4 verse 1 now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith and therefore it's no it's, it's no surprise when some people have been in the faith when they go away from the faith when they backslide from the faith when they fall away from the faith when they depart from the faith because now the spirit speaketh expressly pointedly very clearly certainly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith they'll be giving heed to seducing spirits enticing spirit it's a spirit of seduction and if you understand the spirits of seduction they use quite a lot of things seduction uses psychology and seduction uses demonology and seduction uses evil power and when you combine everything together the flesh and the spirit and psychology and philosophy and everything and science and for, for uh, science falsely so called when you bring everything together you, you then give heed to seducing spirits doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron and therefore there's no feeling anymore and so you find the danger in joining the false religious system of this world we're going to divide the study to three parts number one the position and the perversion of the mother of harlot 
the position and the perversion of the mother of harlots. Number two, the power and the possession of the mother of abominations. Number three, the portrait and the persecution and the mystery of atrocities. We come back to number one. In number one, we have the position and the perversion of the mother of harlots. I come to Revelation chapter 17 and we're looking at verses 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 17, we're looking at verses 1 and 2. And there came one of the seven angels, which are the seven vials, and talk with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show you, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great war, of the great adulteress, that is of, great, of this great unfaithful woman. It's a system represented by the war, the adulteress, the adult, or the unfaithful woman, that seated upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. You uh, here you see the position where the all uh, that is where the adulteress, where the harlot is sitting. And you see the perversion because it talks about the, the fornication, the kings of the earth committing fornication with this harlot. And even the inhabitants of the earth have been made to have been made to drink of the wine of her fornication. As you think about uh, this uh, picture. Or you think about this system, or you're thinking of this a great war, actually it's talking about the judgment. If you look at the latter part of verse 1, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great war that sitteth upon many waters. Judgment is going to come upon the whole system and upon everyone in that system. The judgment of the great war. That, and of all the inhabitants of the earth who are drunk of the wine of her fornication is certain that great war, that adulteress, is the, is the great harlot, the lewd, abandoned woman, representing and picturing the corrupt, idolatrous, unfaithful, apostate church of these last days, which will be influential during the great tribulation. Because this period we're actually reading about is the latter part of the great tribulation. And uh, that uh, great war, that great harlot, and that mother of harlots, and the mother of abominations will be so influential during that time of the great tribulation. I pray you will not be here at that time. I said, I pray you will not be here at that time. That means you will not join the adulterous church. You will not join the apostate church. You will not join the false church. You will not join the, the very opposite of the bride of Christ. Because it says, talks about many waters, that that great war seated upon many waters. As I've read to you already, Revelation chapter 17 verse 15, look at it again. And it says unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the war seated, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. That means then the water is representing, symbolizing the nations as we have explained, as we have read now. The heart of the false religious system will have and will exercise great worldwide sovereign power. The position of the mother of Hanos, the mother of abominations, is that of a ruler sitting upon a throne, ruling and controlling the nations of the world. And then he tells us something. If you look at that Revelation chapter 17, and in verse 2 it says, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And that's why as a church, I talk to you as an individual, as an individual don't join the false church. Don't join the apostate church. Don't join any church that is not standing fully on the totality of the word of God. Don't join any church that, you know, the founder just uh, had a dream or had a revelation or had a desire. Just woke up one morning and said, I'm starting a church. That's not how to start a church. Don't join them. And then, not only as an individual, we now, as a corporate church together, as an assembly together, as uh, people of this church together, don't let us join any association of churches that will eventually lead, uh, you know, the church astray because the Lord is going to deal with the whole system as a system and is going to deal with the apostate church. And you'll find that the apostate church will have political power. They might even have magical power. 
They might even have monetary financial power. They might even have a, you know, a kind of power that has controls property and controls kings because it says, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And as a church, as a body, we shouldn't be jealous of any church. Uh, you find that, you know, that church is having a program and, you know, the kings are there and the politicians are there and the chiefs are there and the idol worshippers are there, international people are there. And then we we'll say, what are we looking at? Look at our church. Why is it that only our members and the common, common people are in our church? Why don't we do something so that the kings of the earth, they too, they will be interested and they will bring their money and they will bring their politics and they'll bring their wrong ideas and they'll bring their philosophy and bring their psychology don't do that as a church as individuals run away from them as a corporate body a corporate church run away from them these are the last days because this great harlot it's with him the kings of the earth are committing fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have, made, have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication the great all the great harlot, the unfaithful apostate church has seduced the rulers of the earth, leading them into idolatry, false worship, and corruption. Even today, many princes and nobles and great men are entirely under the influence of the corrupt and righteous religious organization. And that's the reason why we ought to be very careful as a church. As you look at uh, this uh, passage, these verses 1 and 2 in particular, uh, what do you see? It's talking about the woman. I talk number one, the identity of that woman. And it talks about the identity is a false church, is the apostate church, is the falling church, is the church that rejoices and delights in false doctrine and false worship. Number two, the iniquity of that woman. And you'll see the iniquity described there is fornication. You see the iniquity, spiritual fornication, spiritual, idol, spiritual adultery, which is idolatry. And also martyrdom, killing, destroying uh, the people because, uh, you know, it's talking about uh, those who have been martyrs of the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of, the, of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Number one, identity. Number two, iniquity. Number three, the influence. The influence of that woman. Because all the kings of the earth, they commit fornication with her. And in fact, all the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Number four, the interpretation of who this woman is. Mystery. Babylon the Great, mother of harlots, abominations of the earth. And number five, idolatry. Idolatry. They have committed harlotry with the stalks and the stones idolatry and then number six insanity insanity literally they become mad and they become drunk or the blood of the saints and let me talk to you some some of you young people that you don't understand that in your school or in your college or your university some young people may call you men and women boys and girls together and they say let us make a covenant and let then they pinch you and then they take your blood and pinch the other and take her blood and pinch the other and take his blood and then they put everything in the cup and mix everything together they might uh, go somewhere to put some incantations there and to put some causes there if anybody will ever come out of this united thing that you are doing this will happen that will happen then they bring the cup of blood back and they say you drink your own you drink your own you drink your own and then you become drunk with the blood of one another it is occultism and that is how people get into evil and it is taken from the system of mystery babylon it's not a it's not a new thing it's already here it is you know people being drunk with the blood of the saints and then the people that are there you are joining a particular gang or particular cult or particular society and then you're sucking blood somebody is pregnant you are sucking blood another person is doing well you are sucking his blood another fellow is healthy you are sucking his blood until he becomes lean he becomes you know like a skeleton and doesn't have any blood anymore because you are drinking the blood of the people it's part of mystery babylon and when you do that, you already join them. But judgment is coming. That's exactly what we're looking at today. If you remember verse 1, it says, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great awe that sitteth upon many waters. Number one is the identity. 
Number two is the iniquity. Number three is the influence. Number four is the interpretation. Number five, the idolatry. Number six, the insanity. Number seven, the indignation. The indignation. The wrath that will come upon them. The judgment that will come upon them. And the, the, the violent judgment, punishment that will come upon the people. Please come back to Revelation chapter 17 verses 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 17. I'm reading to you from verses 1 and 2. And there came one of the seven angels which had seven vials. And talked with me, saying unto me, come hither. And I will show thee the judgment of the great all that seated upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication chapter 19 verse 2 for true and righteous are his judgments for he has judged the great all judgment will come upon them upon the whole system it's like if you are living in a house and judgment falls upon that house and calamity falls upon that house or fire devastates that house or it's a great stone a great thunder that wrecks that house it affects everybody in that house and when you join a false church the apostate church the church that is not built on the cornerstone of christ the church that is not standing fully, internally, outwardly, through and through, on holiness and purity. The church that is not washed whiter than snow by the blood of the Lamb. Judgment will come upon that whole system. True and righteous are his judgments, for he has judged the great all, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and has avenged the blood of his servants at our hand in nahum chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 4 old testament in the minor prophets in nahum we're looking at chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 4 verse 5 and verse 6 and you will see what the lord is still talking about in prophetic language the judgment of those who are not standing upon the truth because of the multitude of the wardens of the well-favored harlot well-favored harlot how is it well favored? You must remember what we have read already. That the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Having a golden cup in her hand full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Is a well favored harlot because of the multitude of the wardens of the well favored harlot. The mistress of witchcrafts. Do you see that? Those who rejoice in the fact that uh, you know they are witches and wizards. Or they're the queen of the coast and they're rejoicing that they have magical power cultic power they're rejoicing that they're in the in the spirit world and they're rejoicing that they have some parts of darkness and witchcraft it says the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her wardens and families through her witchcrafts if you're selling families through your witchcraft if you're selling men and women through your witchcraft that is you are selling them into the hands of satan into the hands of, of your society it says behold i am against you says the lord of hosts i will discover thy skirts upon thy face i will show the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame i will cast abom abominable fields upon thee and make thee vile and will search thee as a gazing stock and you will see then that it is judgment that will come upon all those people it tells us in revelation in uh, jeremiah chapter 51 jeremiah chapter 51 and i'm reading to you from verses 13 and 14 jeremiah chapter 51 in jeremiah chapter 51 looking at verses 13 and 14 oh that that dwellest upon many waters abundant in treasures then end is come the measure of thy covetousness remember it says you that dwell upon many waters in a way it is you know occultic and spiritual and also it is uh, something that is um, prophetic uh, many waters i've told you already it's like you know many nations and many people and many tribes and it's uh, moving among them but you understand the people that deal with occultism they'll tell you many times they find themselves in the river and they find themselves beside the river 
and then they're able when they get their power their, their, uh, their kind of a uh, mammoth power they're able to do evil but the word of god is telling us that whether you're in the prophetic babylon or you're in the present babylon or you're in the occultic babylon whatever it is the judgment of god is definite and very sure we're told in verse 14 the lord of hosts has sworn by himself saying surely i will fill thee with men as with caterpillars and they shall lead up a shout against thee it's talking about the judgment that will eventually come and if you look at it from verse 7 that same uh, jeremiah chapter 51 verse 7 babylon has been a golden cup in the in the lord's hand that has made all they has drunken the nations have dr the nations have drunken of her wine uh, therefore the nations are mad that's what i tell you about the insanity the insanity of that mystery babylon the insanity of that of that uh, hallowed the insanity of that woman i say babylon is suddenly falling and destroyed howl for her take balm for her pain if so be she may be healed we would have healed babylon but she is not healed forsake her let us go everyone into his own country for her judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies and that's what you'll find that judgment eventually will come we're told in isaiah chapter 50 chapter 21 isaiah chapter 21 reading from verses 9 and 10 isaiah chapter 21 verse 9 and behold here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen and he answered and said babylon is falling is falling and all the graven images of our gods are uh, he has broken onto the ground oh my threshing and the corn of my floor that which i have heard of the lord of hosts the god of israel have i declared unto you and that's why the lord is uh, telling us that now uh, you need to return to the lord if you have joined the mystery babylon if you have joined the backsliding people if you have joined the apostate church if you have joined the false church come out of there because judgment will soon come upon that whole system look at verse 11 the body of duma he calleth unto me out of seer watch man what of the night watch man what of the night preacher when is it coming this devastation and this darkness and this wrath and the indignation and the judgment and the pressure that is coming and the whole earth will feel it watchman what of the night what of the night the watchman said the morning cometh and also the night the morning of resurrection that's the rapture it will come forth and then there'll be the great tribulation if thou will inquire inquire ye return come come out of them because it will not be long anymore when the lord himself shall come and then the people that remain with that idolatrous adulterous uh, babylon they'll perish with adulterous idolatrous babylon i pray you will not perish i pray you'll not be with them in jesus name i come to point number two the power and the possession of the mother of abominations we're looking at revelation chapter 17 verses 3 and 4 revelation chapter 17 i'm reading verses 3 and 4 so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and i saw a woman seat upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls and having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication if you have read uh, any of the uh, magazines um, you know sometimes and they're showing the picture of uh, the apostate church maybe they show them in their colors or they show them what they are, or they show them in, in various ways a full colored picture you will understand what we're reading about here and you'll see the idolatry and you will see the mystery and you will see the magic and you will see all the things that you know this passage is talking about that's why the lord is telling us we come out from among them 
It's talking about the power of this mother of abominations. It's also talking about the possession of this mother of abominations. The apostles said, that is John the beloved said, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting upon a scarlet colored beast. Uh, you need to understand something. There's the difference between the real church, the true church, and the apostate church. In fact, even when the Lord was going to show the apostle John, the bride of Christ, he carried him to a mountain, great and high. But when the Lord was going to show John, the beloved, the apostate church, the falling church, the adulterous church, this mysterious false church, the church that has been prepared for the great tribulation period, he carried him into the wilderness. And it's the difference between the mountain and the wilderness. Wherever there is spiritual allotry or adultery, there is desolation. It's the desolation of the wilderness and a desert of dreary waste. And he said, I saw a woman, the same great or the same harlot in verse 1, is sitting upon a scarlet colored beast full of the names of blasphemy. The scarlet color is uh, the color of luxury and splendor and, and royalty. The scarlet colored beast is actually the Antichrist. And for a time, he will support and use the false religious system to bring about world unity. But eventually, he will openly bear the names and the titles of blasphemy. And then we're told concerning this that the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and dead with gold and precious stones and pearls. The woman representing the church that has fallen, the church that has departed from the faith, is portrayed as a prostitute who has plied her trade successfully and become extremely rich, extremely wealthy. And there is a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. The inner life and the secret acts of the leaders and the members in the apostate church are full of abominations and filthiness. They are full of all forms of uncleanness. And as we look at this, let's look at Revelation chapter 17 verse 18. It says, The woman which thou sawest is a great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. That is, uh, the, the Antichrist will have an headquarters. And the headquarters will be a religious headquarters as well as a political headquarters. And it will reign over the kings of the earth. In Revelation chapter 18, reading from verse 12. Revelation chapter 18, reading from verse 12. And the merchandise of gold and the silver and precious stones and of pearls and of fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all, uh, all time. All thine wood, and all manner of vessels of ivory, and all manner of vessels of ivory, and all manner of vessels of the most precious wood, and of brass, and of iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and uh, fine flour, and uh, wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and the souls of men. If you notice, uh, you know, some of those uh, churches, that is uh, the, the, the apostate church, the false church, the church that has departed from the faith, they do a lot of business. And they have a lot of wealth, a lot of money. But they're not only selling goods and properties, you'll see at the end of that verse 13, the souls of men. And that's the most dangerous part of it. And you'll find that those calls and those um, those churches, you know, there, there are some churches who can't even, you cannot even differentiate between the cult and the church. Because uh, there, are some, uh, there are some churches where calls are really established. And you have calls inside there. And you find the leadership of the church and some of the workers and, and members of that church involved very much in the cult. And then they are selling the souls of men into the hands of Satan. They are selling the souls of men into the hands of evil. They are selling the souls of men and they are selling them for eternal perdition. That's why it says part of their merchandise you'll find are silver and gold and cinnamon and wood and precious things. And then and the souls of men in verse 14 and the fruits of thy soul and the fruit that thy soul lusteth after had departed from thee. And all things which were dainty 
and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. And the merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city which has which was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in an hour, so great riches has come to naught, and every ship matter, master, and all the all the all the company in ships and sailors, as many as trade by sea, stood afar off, and they cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, "What city is like unto this great city?" And that means eventually devastation will come. But as we come back to Revelation chapter 17, Revelation chapter 17, we we're looking at verses 3 and 4. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman seat, a woman seat upon a scarlet colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and dead ways gold and precious stones some pearls having a golden cup in a handful of abominations and filthiness of her fornication you'll find there are three definite marks of this woman of this harlot of this mother of harlots of this mother of abominations what are those three definite marks number one blasphemy the latter part of verse three full of the names of blasphemy Number two, abominations. You'll find that the latter part of verse four, full of abominations. Number three, filthiness. Full of filthiness of her fornication. And so you'll find those three things that will mark the woman, that will mark the system. And if you are part of that system, eventually those things will influence you. And those things will rub off on you. Let's look at it. Number one, blasphemy. Full of blasphemy. It says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. The very first thing you'll notice about the Antichrist will be blasphemy. He will sit in the temple of God and then he will say that he is God. But even before the coming of the Antichrist, already that spirit is working now. It tells us in verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. That's why those of us that know the scriptures and those of us who are following eschatology, that is the study of the last things, that's why we're very, very observant and we're very careful and sometimes we're even fearful of some of the things we see. When you see somebody that is having the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of opposition, the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of tearing apart, the spirit of separating, going away from the body of Christ. The spirit that says, no, I'm going to tear the body apart. I'm going to tear the church apart. I'm going to carry some people away. You know, it's just going to be a few weeks, a few months, a few years. If Jesus tarries, and you'll begin to see the full manifestation of the blasphemy, of the false doctrine, of departure from the faith. And if you join them, eventually, that's why we're weeping for some people. They don't know head or tail. It's like when Absalom rose up. And Absalom was saying, well, uh, you know, I could be this, I could be that. And then some people, they didn't know they had left from their right. They were simple-minded. And in their simplicity and foolishness, they followed after Absalom. Eventually, they were destroyed. And that's why we're warning everybody. When you find somebody that the spirit, that mystery of iniquity is already working, tearing apart, and he doesn't want to remain with the body of Christ, he wants to set apart his own, he wants to, you know, carry something apart, you're very, you're very careful. The mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. The very mark you will see is the mark of blasphemy blasphemy it tells us in first john chapter 2 first john chapter 2 
And I'm reading to you from verse 18. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, it tells us very clearly there it's about the this, this spirit of the Antichrist. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that the Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. We know it is the last time because that spirit of the Antichrist is already at work now. Chapter 4, verse 3. First John chapter 4, verse 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. This is a spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that he shall come. And even now already is it in the world you'll find that that spirit of the antichrist is already now in the world and that's the reason you want to be careful because that spirit will be walking it may not come out openly now it may not come out fully fleshed now but even though you don't understand just stay where you are you understand as you come to the monday bible study as you hear the word of god and we and we line it up line up online precept on precept and you know that this is the truth are you going to leave certainty for uncertainty are you going to leave the truth for something you don't understand? You, we're sure of this one. We know that this is the truth. The word of salvation. And the word of holiness. And the word of power. We know everything is made open here. Are you going to go into something that is secret? You don't understand. You don't know the very root or the very foundation of it. That's why you stay with the truth. So that you'll, you'll not be caught up with the wind of the spirit of the Antichrist. Number one mark then is blasphemy. It tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm reading to you from verse 1 and then from verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Reading from verse 1. Now there is no also that in the last days pray lost time shall come. Men for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. In the last days, blasphemy will come. They will be disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. And then he tells us in verse 5, having a form of godliness. You see, a practicing religion, but it is mystery Babylon. They will still be practicing religion, but it is the deception of the last days. It says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such, turn away. As we come back to Revelation, we're looking at Revelation chapter 17. I told you in Revelation chapter 17, verses 3 and 4. There are three words you are thinking about. Number one, blasphemy. Number two, abominations. Abominations. Full of abominations. And the Lord is telling us we need to be very careful because of the abominations. It tells us in Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23, the Lord is uh, defining for us and the Lord is uh, clearing it up for us what these abominations are and why you need to, why you need to be very careful, watch yourself, watch your life, watch your fellowship, watch who you associate with. In Matthew chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 25, one to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter. But within, they are full of extortion and excess. Verse 27, one to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye are like the whitest sepulchre, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. That's the abomination right there. The abominations. Well, what we're studying in Revelation chapter 17 is still the full part of it is still in the future. The full revelation of it is still in the future. It's going to be the time of the Antichrist. But even at the time of Jesus Christ, the shadow of it was still was already there. And the spirit and the attitude of it was already there. That's why Jesus said openly, outwardly, it looks wonderful, it looks nice. It's just like if you were to, you know, I don't encourage you to attend, never attend such a thing. But if you were to attend, you know, some of these people that say God is speaking to them. And now they have a master plan. And they line everything out. Outwardly, it looks beautiful. 
And that's how the devil sucks people in. Because they'll say, look at the plan, look at the project, look at the future thing, look at the intention, look at the provision, look at how it's going to be done. Outwardly, it's going to look very beautiful. But don't, don't you remember that this woman was talking about that she said this harlot is dead, scarlet color, and then we're told that it has a gold and precious stone and pearls and a golden cup. It's going to look beautiful on the outside. But then when you go inside there, and sometimes it's difficult to come out. Because it's like you have made a covenant. Not only that, sometimes when you go into something like that, and you now discover the, 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 the draws and the drag and the corruption and the perversion and the pollution and the evil and the death and the filthiness and the abomination that is inside there, shame will not allow you to come out. Because then you'll be saying, if I come back to the church now, if I go back now to deeper life, and you'll say, didn't you tell you, why, why did you go? Now you are a coordinator before you left. You are a soldier before you left. You are a worker before you left. Come, go and sit down there. You'll just be a floor member. The shame will not allow you to go back. Even when you discover that this is abomination. And we're told in Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. We're looking at verse 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they will justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. You see the things that people are carrying about and is highly esteemed among men in the sight of God is abomination. And then we're told in Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy. We're looking at chapter 18. Remember, we're looking at the marks of this woman. The mark of this whole system. The marks of this halotry. And the marks of this uh, spiritual idolatry and spiritual adultery. We're told in Deuteronomy chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 9. When thou art come into the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that chooses divination, magic, sorcery, so saying, fortune telling, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter, or a familiar spirits, or wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God does drive them out from before thee. And the Lord is warning us then that you know the marks of this woman, of this harlot, of this mother of harlots, of this mother of abominations. Number one, blasphemy. Number two, abominations. Number three, now, filthiness filthiness. You come back to Revelation chapter 17 verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet column and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Filthiness. That's another thing the Lord is telling us is a mark of this strange and false religion. This apostate and falling church and the Lord is saying don't even have anything that smacks of filthiness. Don't have anything in your life at all that resembles filthiness in any way. Let's be counted among uh, the woman, among the system, represented by the harlot, represented by this woman. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse Verses 3 and 4. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming believers, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather the giving of thanks. The Lord is telling us that uh, we shouldn't allow that in our lives because uh, the Lord will soon come. And when the Lord comes, he'll take the church away. And then those who remain behind, if you have filthiness in your life, you are going to remain behind and you are going to be part of the kingdom of that Antichrist. James chapter 1 verse 21, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. All filthiness. All filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. If you are taking the light in being naughty, you are taking the light in being stubborn, you are taking the light in being tough, 
You are taking the light in being disobedient. You are taking the light in being rebellious. You are not careful. You are going to part of that system. Lay apart. Lay aside. Jettison. Throw away. Boycott. Run away from all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. And then it says, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 Having therefore these promises dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God. I come to point number three. In point number three we have the portrait and the persecution and the mystery of atrocities. This is very serious. You need to pay attention now. Uh, there are some things you have never learned perhaps. You need to learn in these two verses. Therefore put on, you know, put on your belt and buckle up and actually pay attention and concentrate with all your mind and all your brain. In uh, chapter 17 of uh, Revelation, verses 5 and 6. Upon her forehead was a name reaching mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered, I expressed surprise with great astonishment, great admiration. Upon her forehead was the name written, and it was the name Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of Halos, abominations of the earth. The identity of the great war, of the mother of Halos, that is, of the abominations of the earth, is here revealed. Mystery Babylon. What's a mystery? It's something hidden, it's something concealed but now disclosed and exposed and it's referred to as babylon the great all false systems of religion actually date back to babel or babylon you'll find that in genesis chapter 10 verses 8 to 10 and the religion of babylon originated from a man named nimrod his wife semiramis he founded that his nimrod founded babel or babylon and the kingdom of Babylon. And she, and she, that is the wife, Semiramis, became the first high priestess of idolatry. When she gave birth to a son, after giving birth to that son, she said, the son was conceived miraculously by a sunbeam. You must understand that false religion is based on lying on deception. And it so puts the lie that people are easily deceived. And the son was named Tammuz. And offered as promised, as a promised deliverer of the earth. Uh, you'll find that in false religion, uh, they'll, they'll get some truth out of the word of God. And they'll bring a counterfeit out of it. And this uh, Miramis, the wife of Nimrod, who established the kingdom of Babylon, which he gave back to Tammuz the son. And then offered that son as the deliverer of the earth to replace the Lord Jesus Christ. Even before Christ came, according to pagan legend, when Thomas became a man, a wild bear slew him, killed him. And, but after 40 days his mother's, uh, of his mother's weeping, that's a story, but it's a lie, it's deception. It is to confuse the minds of people and it's to establish the religion of, the, of paganism at that time. And the story was like, you know, Semiramis was weeping and crying for Thomas because of the death. And then after 40 days, something happened that now Thomas rose from the dead. It's from then that Semiramis, the mother, and Thomas, the son, became worshipped. And the cultic worship of mother and child began to spread throughout all the earth. The 40 days of Lent then began. If you have been wondering since you came to this church, why well, is it that, you know, when the other people who are called Christians, they are observing Lent and they are fasting for 40 days, 
and they say they are fasting for 40 days before the death of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, why don't we join them? It has nothing to do with the Bible. Nothing. Because the 40 days of fasting of the Lord Jesus Christ was not before his death. It was at the beginning of his ministry. Then he did not pass it on to his own disciples that they should fast for 40 days. And you will not find that in the Acts of the Apostles. You will not find that anywhere in the New Testament that the church should be fasting for 40 days of Lent. It actually came from Semiramis and Tammuz and it came from this pagan religion. And actually what happened is that eventually uh, when they said Tammuz had risen up from the dead, when the mother son called, finally got to Rome. The Roman emperor, a political leader, not a Christian, not, uh, not uh, even carrying the Bible. It was uh, Pontifex Maximus. He then became the high priest. When this uh, kind of religion came to Rome, then they matched idolatry, politics, religion, everything together. Eventually in history, Constantine made Christianity, in quotes, the state religion. And all the pagan practices originating from Babylon were then brought in into nominal apostate church. The religion of mother child worship then is abomination in the sight of the Lord. That's where it started. Let me show you. In Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 8 rather. In Ezekiel chapter 8. Mark this in your Bible. Ezekiel chapter 8 verses 13 and 14. In Ezekiel chapter 8. Verses 13 and 14. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that, that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there are such women weeping for Tammuz. Pagan religion, Tammuz. And from Babylon. The children of Israel, you know the children of Israel, they went to Babylon. And when they went to Babylon, they gathered up the religion, the paganism in Babylon. And it came to pass as uh, they were even now celebrating, or they were now mourning. Uh, they were observing 40 days. And they were weeping and weeping, weeping this morning. They were mourning and weeping for Tammuz. And God said, Ezekiel turning. And see these people, these Israelites, and see how they are weeping for Tammuz, this pagan religion. And that's what many churches are still doing today. Of course, there are some ignorant people. They just observe the 40 days of Lent. They just go through all the rituals and everything, or whatever they are calling it, without knowing anything at all. But thank God, God is telling us the truth. I said, thank God is telling us the truth. And we will not perish with the people that are following error in Jesus' name. Mystery Babylon or mystical Babylon is also called the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Institutions of false religions and nominal apostate churches promote abominations which will prevail during the great tribulation. At the time of the great tribulation, it will be much, much more. And then John the beloved said, I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. False religion has killed millions of believers over the centuries. And false religious system of the last days will be far more deadly than any that preceded it. The judgment of all who sell their souls to the apostate church and false religions, that will be terrible, fearful and eternal. And uh, the question is, have you surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? If you have not, you need to surrender yourself to the Lord. And we're told in, uh, in the Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, I'm reading from chapter 2, reading from verse 3. We've read parts of this before. Let's read the whole thing now. In Second Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. It tells us here in the word of God. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, now ye know. What withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. 
for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now let it were led until he be taken out of the way. Let me read that verse again for you to understand. That word let is an old English word for hinder. So I'm going to use the word hinder for you to understand. The mystery for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now hindereth will hinder until he be taken out of the way. He's talking of the church, the pure church, the true church, the holy church, the precious church, the glorious church. That the church now is uh, hindering the coming out of the Antichrist and the blooming of the great tribulation period. That's, but when the church is taken away in the rapture, then everything will come out in full scale. Then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume, or the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy or the brightness of his coming even him whose coming is after the power of satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause god shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness i pray that you will escape but if you are going to escape, what's the secret? The Lord is saying, you come out from among them. In Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. Revelation chapter 18. We're looking at verse 4. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. That's what the Lord is telling us now. That before that great tribulation will come and before the antichrist will come out in full color and before this woman will be revealed in full color and in purple and scarlet and in gold and you know and decked all over before this harlot religion will take over the whole world if you're still in that system come out of them come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues in numbers chapter 16 i'm reading verse 26 when you see that destruction is coming and judgment is coming and judgment is going to come upon the whole system and everyone in that system they're going to share of the judgment that will come if you have any friend there any brother there any sister any relative there go and tell them that judgment is going to come it's not only going to come on individuals it's going to come upon the whole system upon the whole of mystery babylon the great babylon the mother of halos and the mother of abominations of the earth if you have anybody there go and tell them come out numbers chapter 16 and in verse 26 and he spake unto the congregation saying depart i pray you from the tents of these wicked men and touch nothing of theirs lest ye be consumed in all their sins the lord is saying come out in, in uh, jeremiah chapter 50 jeremiah chapter 50 i'm reading to you in the first part of verse 8 jeremiah chapter 50 we're looking at verse 8 it's telling us in jeremiah chapter 50 and in verse 8 it says remove out from the midst of babylon the mystery babylon the false religion remove yourself out of the midst of babylon and go forth out of the land of the chaldeans and be as the he goes before the flocks that is the first he goes that will come out first and run out first and rush out first so that you will not perish in the mystery with mystery babylon in jeremiah chapter 51 verse 6 flee out of the midst of babylon and deliver every man his soul be not cut off in her iniquity for this is the time of the lord's vengeance he will render unto her a recompense if the judgment was not to come upon everybody, why will the Lord be telling you to come out of that false religion, of that false system? The Lord has warned you. The Lord has sounded the notes of warning very clear, very loud, and is uh, is uh, striking in their heart. 
flee out of the midst of her, out of the midst of Babylon, and deliver every man his soul, be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance, and it will render unto her a recompense. In verse 45, Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 45, my people go ye out of the midst of her, deliver ye every man a soul from the fierce anger of the lord it's like when the angels came to sodom and gomorrah and they were warning lot and the wife and the two daughters and they said come out come out because the lord is going to destroy this place don't you know false religion mystery babylon the harlot religion and the fallen church the apostate church is like sodom and gomorrah and their sin have filled the cup of their iniquity and the lord is saying come out genesis chapter 19 verse 12 genesis chapter 19 verse 12 and the men said unto the Lord, Haste thou, as thou hear any besides son-in-law or thy sons and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in this in, in this city, bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Verse 16, and while he lingered, the men laid hold upon the hand, upon his son, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord be merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and said, he without the city and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that they said escape 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 for thy life look not behind thee neither stay thou in all the plain escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed in verse 26 but his wife looked back but his wife looked back with all the warning and with the fire coming down and with the judgment coming down upon sodom and gomorrah and the wife looked back is there anybody there you have had a warning today you have heard that mystery babylon great babylon is going to be destroyed and you have heard that the devastation is going to be terrible is there anybody there that is still lingering anybody there that is not saved anybody there that is still in the mystery babylon is still in the false church is still in the apostate church anybody there that is still in the church where you are not sure of the foundation you are not sure of what they're doing and the lord is saying come out and then you say but my brother is there but my sister is there but the person who brought me to the church is there but the person who brought me to the lord is there but you know he's falling now but you know he's gone back to your false doctrine and the lord is saying come out so you will not perish with babylon and then lord's wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt i've made up my mind i have come out i'll never go back into that mystery babylon i've made up my mind i've come back i've come out of that false religion i'll never go back in jesus name how about you where do you stand today are you still in mystery babylon you are one leg in the truth and one leg in error you are one leg in the true church you are one leg in the false church you are one leg in zion you are one leg in babylon where do you stand the lord is calling you today on this day of mercy come out and the lord will receive you rise up and let us pray and you tell the lord i will not perish with babylon i will not perish with the mother of abominations i will not perish with that hallowed mystery babylon i will not perish with all the idolatry with all their all their false religion i will not perish with them in their false religion i'm coming out i'm coming out i'm coming out i am out already i am out already jesus take me i repent of my sin i turn away from my evil i turn away Away from my stubbornness i turn away from all the all the evil the rebellion in my hand i now belong to the lord jesus jesus i surrender jesus i surrender i surrender completely unto you i belong to the lord from now on i will never look back i'll never look back remember lord's wife remember lord's wife don't go back into your sin don't go back into abomination don't go back into filthiness don't go back into blasphemy don't go back into worldliness don't go